Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Naila Javed from the Physiology Department, Sheikh Zayed Medical College, Lahore. You are going to study with me blood physiology. We will start with an overview of the blood. So, blood, as you know, is a connective tissue. Connective tissue is that thing which provides support to the tissues and organs of the body. In general statistics, in an average 70 kg man, there is almost about 42 liters of fluid. Out of this 42, 28 liters is the inter intracellular fluid and the remaining 14 is the ECF volume, extracellular fluid. We will further divide into two. 11 liters is the interstitial fluid and the remaining 3 liters is the plasma volume. What is the total blood volume? In an average kg person, total blood volume is 5 to 5.5 liters. Now, you should know the composition of blood. Blood is composed of almost 55% plasma and 45% are the formed elements. What is the composition of plasma? Plasma is almost 90 one percent water and nine percent are the remaining proteins hormones enzymes electrolytes inorganic substances and non-protein nitrogenous compounds what are the formed elements present inside the blood they are mainly the rbcs which are also called as erythrocytes wbcs which are called as leukocytes and the platelets which are called as thrombocytes now you should know about plasma what is plasma? If we remove cells from the blood, then it is called as plasma. And if we remove proteins from the plasma, then it is called as serum. What is hematocrit? Hematocrit is the percentage of blood cells, but mainly the RBCs. Hematocrit is almost 45% in females and 50% in males. Hematocrit of venous blood is more and in anemia, hematocrit is decreased because red cell count is decreased in anemias. Now, what are the physical characteristics of blood? Blood is bright red in color due to oxygenated hemoglobin. What is the pH of the blood? pH of the blood ranges from 7.35 to 7.45. If the pH is less than 7.35, then the blood is acidic and the, if the pH is more than 7.5 then blood is more towards the alkaline side but naturally the pH of the blood is more slightly towards the alkaline side. Venous blood is more darker due to deoxygenated hemoglobin. Now what is the specific gravity? Specific gravity is the ratio of rate of any given amount of fluid to the rate of equal amount of water. So, in case of excessive loss of fluids from the body, such as in vomitings and diarrhea, whenever there is a loss of fluid into the tissue spaces, plasma is lost, then the specific gravity will be increased. And if there is excessive intake of fluid or IV drip, so the volume of the red cells or other blood cells is decreased, then the specific gravity is decreased. So, the normal specific gravity of the blood ranges from 1.055 to 1.050. Now, the viscosity of the blood. Viscosity is the resistance offered to the blood flow. It mainly depends upon the number and size of RBCs. Normal viscosity of the blood ranges from 3.5 to 5.5. What are the functions of the blood? First of all, need is the transport function. It is further divided into many types. What are the functions of the blood? Blood mainly has a transport function that includes, includes respiratory function, digestive functions, excretory and distributive functions. So, first of all, the respiratory function. It involves in the transport of the gases, for example, oxygen to the tissues and remove carbon dioxide from the tissues. Then the digestive function in the transport. It involves transport of the glucose and various carbohydrates to the organs of the body. Then the excretory function, it involves the excretion of the waste products. And the distributive function in which the hormones in combination with the plasma proteins are directed towards the target organ. Now, the defensive function. As we know that WBCs are the part of blood and they are involved, they are also called as the soldiers of body. So they are involved in the protecting the body from the infectious agents. Regulatory function. So blood is involved in the regulation of the pH and the acidic acid base balance. If the acids are more in the blood, then the pH is low and the blood is towards the acidic side. So blood is involved in the regulation of the pH and the acidic acid base balance so if the acids are more in the blood then the ph is low and the blood is towards the acidic side but if the bases are more then the ph is more and the blood is more towards the alkaline side normally 
the blood is slightly towards the alkaline side, hemostatic function. As we know that the platelets are the part of the blood. Platelets and the clotting factors are involved in the maintenance of hemostatic functions of the body. So whenever there is an injury, blood clots are going to form so that the injured point is sealed. Storage functions. It is involved in the storage of oxygen, carbon dioxide, various nutrients and electrolytes. Now, the plasma protein. As we know, plasma is almost 55%. And what is the composition of plasma? It is almost 91% water and the remaining are the proteins, enzymes, salts, inorganic substances. So the plasma proteins mainly are the albumins, globulins and fibrinogens and prothrombin. So albumin is almost 4.8 grams and globulins are almost 2.4 grams. Fibrinogens are 0.3. Other plasma proteins are heptoglobulins, transferrins, protein C, steroids and thyroid binding globulins. Now, the albumin globulin ratio in the blood is 2 ratio 1. Plasma proteins, they are mainly synthesized in the liver except the gamma globulins which are synthesized by the B cell. Now, the albumin. Albumin is mainly responsible for exerting the oncotic pressure in the blood. Almost 80% of the oncotic pressure is contributed by the albumin. Their levels are maintained very carefully in the blood and the average plasma levels in a normal adult is 3.5 to 5 grams per deciliter. It constitutes major part of the plasma protein, mainly synthesized in the liver and it can be coagulated by heat. Its molecular weight is almost 69,000. It is insoluble in water but it can be precipitated by full saturation of ammonium sulfate. Almost 6 to 7 percent of the albumin pool is degraded per day but it can be replaced by the liver synthesis of the albumin. It has most important significance in hypoproteinemia because mainly the albumin is low in hypoproteinemia. Globulins. They are less in amount. Their molecular weight is almost 90,000 to 1,30,000. Gamma globulins. They are antibodies in nature. Antibodies are gamma globulins in nature. Now, the fibrinogen. Molecular weight of the fibrinogen is almost 4 lakhs. It is degraded into fibrin. It is more viscous and it can be coagulated at 56 degrees centigrade. Prothrombin will be converted into thrombin in the presence of thromboplastin and calcium ions. How these blood cells are formed? We know that all blood cells, they are formed within the bone marrow. So within the bone marrow, there is located pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells. These pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells will give rise to all types of the blood cells. They will form committed stem cells and also the memory stem cells. Memory stem cells are those which are stored in the bone marrow and they diminish with age. Committed cells, stem cells are the specific cell lines. For example, colony forming unit erythrocytes, colony forming units, monocytes, megakaryocytes, so that they will further differentiate it into their specific blood cells. How this differentiation occurs from the pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells into the specific blood cells? This occurs in the presence of the growth inducers and the differentiation inducers. Growth inducers mainly involve proteins which are controlling different stages of the growth and the reproduction of different colony forming units or the committed stem cells mainly is the interleukins 3. So this is the diagrammatic representation of development of the blood cells from the bone marrow. We know that within the bone marrow pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells are located. They give rise to colony forming unit spleen which further give rise to colony forming unit blast and this will differentiate into colony forming unit erythrocyte. It will ultimately form RBCs or the erythrocyte. Form the colony forming unit spleen, colony forming unit granulocyte monocytes are formed. They will differentiate into the granulocytes, mainly the neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils and monocytes. Monocytes will further differentiate into the macrophages with macrocytes. Monocytes will further be differentiated into the macrocytes within the tissues. From the colony forming unit, from, from, the, from the colony forming unit spleen, colony forming unit megakaryocytes are formed which are further differentiated into the platelets. So 
all three types of cells are developed from the pluripotent hematopoietic cells. Pluripotent hematopoietic cell stem cells are further differentiated into the lymphoid stem cells, which will give rise to the two types of lymphocytes, B lymphocytes and the T lymphocytes. B lymphocytes will in turn produce antibodies and T lymphocytes will provide immunity. So the very important university question is, what are the functions of the plasma proteins? You know that plasma proteins are mainly albumins, globulins, prothrombins and fibrinogens. So the main function of the plasma protein is to exert plasma colloidal osmotic pressure. This is the pressure that is exerted across the capillary wall and it is almost about 28 millimeter mercury. If I will draw up, suppose that this is the capillary wall, this is the arterial end of the capillary and this is the venous end of the capillary. So at the arterial end, hydrostatic pressure is more and the colloidal osmotic pressure is less. So net filtration occurs. Filtration means that the fluid is going out of the capillaries. And at the venous end, colloidal osmotic pressure is more and the hydrostatic pressure is less. So, fluid will stay inside the capillary. So, this pressure is the plasma colloidal osmotic pressure and this is mainly due to the plasma protein. Now, what is the clotting function? As we know that prothrombin and fibrinogen, they are the part of the plasma proteins. So, they play an important role in clotting. Plasma proteins also play an important role in the providing the viscosity to the blood. It is also involved in the transport of the substances such as hormones, drugs, bilirubins, iron, coppers, lipoproteins, amino acids and fatty acids to the various organs of the body. Plasma proteins also play an important role in the buffering action or maintenance of the acid-base balance. We know that antibodies are gamma globulins in nature and the gamma globulins are the plasma proteins. So they provide protection to the body against the infectious agents. Against the infectious agent. Plasma proteins also act on the WBCs and they form reforms which help in the repair of the damaged tissues. Plasma proteins also provide specific gravity to the blood. These all are the functions of the plasma proteins.